Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Marriage, Money, and Mindset. We are your hosts. I'm Jared. And I'm Alexis. And we are back for episode five of Marriage, Money, and Mindset. Uh, first, before we kick off this episode, we got a few announcements. So, uh, first of all, thank y'all for watching the last episode. If you have, uh, it was episode four on uh, Is That Good or Bad? Hope y'all got some value out of it. Uh, comment on that video if you did. If you didn't comment, same thing. Uh, you know, we want feedback, guys. So give us that whenever y'all watch our videos. Even if it's negative, that's cool. I don't, we, we don't care. So uh, also, another announcement. <laughs> we also want to thank y'all for subscribing. We finally crossed 100 uh, subscribers. Yes, thank you, thank you. On IG and on YouTube. So hey, appreciate y'all for the ones who have subscribed. Want to thank y'all. Appreciate y'all support. Uh, and also, we also want to thank Alex. Uh, we were just recently on his uh, TPE YouTube channel, Alex Seals YouTube channel, for uh, another video that we did with him. Mm -hmm. So if y'all haven't seen that, make sure you go check him out. Subscribe to his channel as well. Um, what was that video about? You remember it was about, mm -hmm. this is how we do finance, right? right. And so uh, it was good content. Uh, and then also be on the lookout for more content we have dropping with him as well. Uh, we have some more projects in the making, so be on the lookout, guys. So uh, you have anything you want to mention to the people or anything you want to say? Talk well, to the people. Let's just jump right in. Jump right so into today's it. episode, we're okay. going to be talking about the key to success and failure in a marriage. Okay. So let's kick it off. Yeah, I know we got the ease of working this time. <laughs> Hopefully, one thing, guys, I noticed, sorry, I want to apologize also for the way the uh, easel has been looking on uh, the video. I mean, we got a better marker this time. And again, guys, look, we're going to get better as the channel grows and as we, you know, do this more often. So we're learning as we go as well. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, um, so this one thing we just wanted to mention that we're working on for you guys. But yeah, she mentioned it, right? So the key to... A success and failure in a marriage. So first, what we want to do um, is define success, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can read it. Okay, so success <clears throat> is an ongoing mm -hmm. journey with different levels of achievements. So there's mm -hmm. a couple different forms of success. We're just highlighting three. So personal success being one. Right. And let's see. Well, you got personal, professional, and business, right? Everything's here at the top. Oh, go ahead. Excuse me. <laughs> Do your thing. Okay, so <laughs> with personal success, that's achieving certain goals or aspirations that are meaningful to you, such as your relationships, your hobbies, mm -hmm. um, travel. Um, yeah. Personal milestones. Personal milestones. Right. Like anniversaries, mm -hmm. um, you know, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what personal, mm -hmm. right? Professional, okay, self-explanatory. It could be, you know, career goals, you know, uh, climbing the ladder, you know, promotions, things of that nature. And then, of course, in business, you know, entrepreneur goals, you know, starting, a, uh, growing a business, yeah, starting a business. Um, investing. Yeah, investing, things of that Financial nature, growth. right? Uh, one more thing on, I want to touch on success. Uh, again, um, that's just how we define it, right? So we define it as a never-ending journey that has different levels of achievements, okay? Uh, one thing you also got to remember, like, success can be subjective, right? Meaning to, success could be what it is to... It's e different. It's different for each individual. Different exactly. It can encompass various aspects of life, right? Uh, and she touched on a few of those aspects of life. So that's defining success, okay? Subjective <clears throat> meaning... Mm -hmm. um, like basically if I set out to be a good wife and mom mm -hmm. and that's what I'm doing, then that okay. makes me successful in that area. So it yeah. doesn't just necessarily mean money. Not necessarily. No, it's, it's not always pertaining to money. Success, right. I think gets a lot of people want to define you're successful if you have a lot of money. That's not the case. Mm -hmm. That doesn't define. It's just so that's just a form of measuring a monetary success right right like you can actually measure your wealth mm -hmm. you know assets minus your liabilities is your network uh income minus your expense is your cash flow it can be measured 
right? right. That's from a monetary standpoint. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about success being in a marriage, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we just touched on this too. Well, there's nothing you can we can touch on. It's, it's not always uh, synonymous with happiness, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like that's another thing I think some people feel like. Um, you know, being successful means they're happy. That's not the case. You know, mm -hmm. you have a lot of people that are deemed as successful, but end up being some of the mis most miserable people on the planet sometimes. Right. Right. You know, so um, it's not, you know, uh, synonymous with happiness as well. Um, and we talked about people having different definition and pathways to what they consider a successful, a successful life. Ooh, you heard it. Gotta talk about that one day. Successful <laughs> life, not sex life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so look, now we're gonna hit on failure. We hit on success. Now let's hit on failure, right? Let's define it. I like to define words, guys, because, you know, um, actually breaking down what a word means, you know, um, is really, I mean, how you understand what it is you're talking about. So just getting the definition is usually, we're going to do a lot of that on this channel. Uh, so let's talk about it, failure. Okay. Uh, so failure is mm -hmm. not achieving a desired goal or outcome. Mm -hmm. um, it's the source of learning and growth. Right. And I want to stop there because basically what that means is just because you fail mm -hmm. is not the end all be all. Yeah. So usually whenever you fall, there's a learning lesson that's attached with it. Yeah. I mean, we could break this all the way down to a little toddler. Yeah. You know, think about it. Okay. We all was little toddlers at one point in time in our lives, right? You know, you're learning how to walk. I'm pretty sure everybody fell their very first time. You took one, two steps and then you fell, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you didn't give up. You didn't just say, well, I guess I'm not you know, going to walk. <laughs> no, you, you figured it out. You eventually learned how to you know, walk, then you felt, figured out how to run, Jumps, jump, yeah. all that, right? So, of course, that's what this is kind of pertaining to it. So, it can be failure, you know, it can be a learning experience, right? right? You can learn and grow from failure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, also, it often provides valuable lessons and insights for the future efforts, okay? So, um, you learn what not to do. Exactly. It's not a permanent condition either, right? Uh, we already touched, you can learn from, you know, your failures to become successful. Right? right, which is the first thing we define, mm -hmm. and just think of success as a. <clears throat> I'm gonna steal this from uh, Earl Nightingale, right? So if y'all ever heard of Earl Nightingale, he has um, a speech called "The Strangest Secret in the World." I highly, highly recommend everybody go and use go search that video on YouTube, right? Um, there's a channel I listen to called uh, VYBO, I believe. It's an acronym for Visualize Yourself Beyond Ordinary. If you go there and search Earl Nightingale's The Strangest Secret in the World, listen to it. They have a dope little track behind it while it's playing. Highly, highly recommend it. If you can get past his voice, because he does sound like Megatron and off the Transformers, mm -hmm. you know, but his message is on point. And some of this is kind of quoted, what we're about to mention, okay? So I just wanted to get that part out there. Um, but success, right? Um, it's a progressive realization of a worthy idea, right? So what does that mean? A progressive realization of a worthy idea. Uh, meaning that you're getting closer and closer each time you like set out to the, to achieve that goal. Yeah. So you may not get it the first time. It's just a daily mm -hmm. progression yeah. or a continuous progression. Yeah. Okay. Someone who's working towards a goal and achieves it, right? Doing deliberately a predetermined task because that's what he or she decided to do. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to talk about what is actually the key to success and failure in a marriage. Mm -hmm. Right. So now yeah. we're going to do a little writing here. So Hershey's going to write down what the answer to the key to success and failure in a marriage is. And the answer is it be. Oh, it's right here. I'm sorry. Got a little technical difficulties, y'all. Okay, go ahead. The key to success and failure in a marriage is it becomes what you think about it. It becomes what you think about it. Sounds kind of basic, right? Mm -hmm. But check this out. It's not so basic. 
And I'm gonna tell you why. The reason is not is because when you think about the word, let's use let's just use think and thought, right? That's mind. Okay, mind is very very powerful, right? Um, one thing about human beings, and probably married couples, I mean they're human beings. <laughs> uh, you can alter your life by altering your attitude of mind. Okay. Yeah, and the power of the tongue. Yeah. I think it's um, also goes back to like biblical, the power mm -hmm. of the tongue, um, mm -hmm. or the Speak the on difference. It. You brought it up. Speak on it. You want to preach? Life and preach? Death, um, <laughs> okay. Lies in the tongue. Something yeah. like that. Don't quote me. <laughs> well, I mean, you but think about it. Okay, human beings can alter their lives, right? By altering their attitude of mind. Right. We're the only creature on the planet that can do that. By the way, right? A dog can only be a dog. A cat can only be a cat. Right. Creatures usually respond in more of like a reactive way. Right. Mm -hmm. To whereas we have when we have conflicts as human beings, um, we don't just react. We have time to sit, you know, evaluate the, the situation. We can we can, you know, thoroughly think about what it is we want to do about it. Right. right. We don't just act. So that's part. That's kind of what, you know, just your attitude of mind can alter your situations, okay? That's that's comes from, that comes from your mind, yeah. right? Your mindset, what you think, right? Mm -hmm. um, now if you care enough about a successful marriage, you will almost certainly obtain it. Right. Right? Um, elaborate on that. Talk okay. to me about so that. So basically, um, just like a whenever you play sports or you do anything like play the piano or whatever, mm -hmm. um, you have to work at it. Like it takes practice. Right. So if you set your mind that you're going to be a good pianist, you mm -hmm. have to put practice towards um, playing the piano. And eventually um, the way that you play gets better over time. So mm -hmm. tying that into a marriage, if I'm putting effort into um, having a successful marriage, whatever that looks like for me, um, Eventually, that's what I'm going to become. Right. So. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a good point. Like I say, you know, successful being, you know, what we defined as a never ending journey. Right. That has le different levels of achievements. We talked on that. Right. Mm -hmm. So for us, an example, that's kind of what we define as a success to our marriage. Like, what are we constantly working toward to, be, to make our situation better for us? Uh, what are our goals? Are they aligned? And are we working towards our goals constantly? Yeah. You know, um, just being careful about caring, <laughs> you know, being caring about our marriage. Right. right. Um, so we got here. If you think in negative thoughts or if you think in negative terms, obviously you will get the negative results. Mm -hmm. Right. So negative thoughts equals negative results. Right. Let's talk about that for one second. So, you know, if you, I think that's what you were mentioning earlier about the tongue. Yes. Thinking about, you know, talking about like, be careful what you say. Um, but negative terms, right? So, you know, if you're thinking like, man, you know, I don't think this is going to work. You know, um, you know, I don't see how we're going to come back from this, you know, um, I don't want to do this anymore with you. That's all negative. Right. Okay. Uh, and if you're speaking that into existence, well, obviously that's probably what you're going to, you know, what's going to come to fruition. Right. Right. Uh, it's kind of self-explanatory. And then of course, obviously positive thoughts equal positive results. Yeah. Right. So that's what you want to do. That's part of being successful in your marriage. Be positive, be optimistic. Right. Um, you know, talk, you know, good about your marriage. Talk great about your marriage. You know, speak positively about every aspect of your marriage. Yeah, you're going to have conflict. Yeah, you're going to not always get along. That somewhat comes with the territory as well. But when you boil it down to respect, how y'all talk to each other and treat each other, even when you have conflicts, you know, discuss your conflicts in a respectful manner. Right. Then, of course, you know, the outcome nine times out of ten will be positive. You may agree to disagree, right? But at the end of the day, or come back to it. Or come back to it. But at the end of the day, if your goal is to remain 
or have a successful marriage. Well, obviously, guys, you know, um, that's part of it, being positive, speaking right. positive terms in your marriage, right? And not only about mm. your marriage, but your spouse. Yeah. Speak life into your spouse. If there mm -hmm. are things that your spouse is lacking, um, whether you say it to them or you say it privately, yeah. like my husband is strong, my husband is smart, my husband is whatever goes after is, um, that's helping them to become. Like yeah. you're just speaking <clears throat> it into existence. Mm -hmm. So yeah, think a positive turn, you get positive results. Think a negative turn, you get negative results. Uh, if you have no goals for your marriage, right? You don't know where you're going, have thoughts of confusion and think about nothing, then your marriage becomes nothing. So no thoughts equals... No results. No results. Okay. Uh, back to thought, right? Uh, use your mind in a positive manner, you know? Um, so... How many marriages do you think out there don't have goals? I mean, I didn't even look up a percentage on it, but I speak to a lot of marriages and I ask that question sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so what's y'all's long-term goals? What's y'all's short-term goals? And sometimes they get kind of thrown off. Like, uh, we just kind of day for day in it. They don't say that, but really think about that. What are your goals, right? What goals do you have? And I mean, to the end of time, right? As long as y'all are together, God willing, you know, God, let's, let's say God let you, allow you to stay here to, we saw a story this morning, a lady was what, 114? Yes. You think she, you think she knew she was going to be able to be 114? Probably not, right? Right. But, but imagine you're, you're here that long, right? Play the long game. Like, we've, we've engineered our life all the way to those, God willing, to those days and reverse engineered it down to present day, right? right. So there's something to look forward to in every stage of our lives, right? Mm -hmm. Short term, long term, you know, the next decade, you know, two, three, four, five decades. Yes, you know. I like to think of it yeah. as chapters. Chapters, exactly, right. And then, uh, you know, I like to also use that, that saying, you know, uh, it's okay to, like, if you're in a car, you driver, you know, I'm in a driver's seat. Mm -hmm. It's okay to look in that rearview mirror, right? The rearview mirror, which is like that big on occasion, just to see how far y'all come, but always stay focused on the, the big picture, right. the windshield, right? Mm -hmm. That's the future you're headed down. That's the road y'all going down. Right. So there should be, this should be a nice journey going down that road. We should be, you know, hitting goals along yeah. this journey, right? So um, again, I think yeah. we mentioned it maybe in the first or second video, mm -hmm. your marriage should look like a stock chart, like steadily, yeah, yeah. well, not all stock charts look like that, but you want it to be steadily progressing. Yeah. So you don't you want, want it to be you want it to stagnant yeah. or um, mm -hmm. going down in yeah. value. And know where you're going, right? Okay. So know where you're going in your marriage. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have, and if you have thoughts of confusion and think about nothing, your marriage becomes nothing. Mm -hmm. So that's what is the alternative if you don't have, you know, uh, a map drawn out for y'all's marriage. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I like a, there's an analogy real fast I want to use for this for this particular point, right? So think of like a cruise ship, okay? And it's leaving the harbor, right? There's a captain, a crew on the ship, a mapped out planned voyage, right? Okay? It knows where it's going and how long it's gonna take to get there. Nine times out of 10, it's gonna get there, right? Take the same cruise ship, right? Give it no captain, no crew, no mapped out, planned voyage, no destination. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of 10, it's gonna sink or wind up on a deserted island if it even leaves the harbor, right? So, okay. Basically, literally what I just explained, you know, that's a great analogy yeah. that gives guidance on how you should map out your journey in right. order to have a successful marriage, right? Doesn't necessarily yeah. mean that you won't face obstacles. Right. Um, on the journey mm -hmm. or road bumps because things do come up life mm -hmm. does happen oh, but yeah. as long as you have a plan mm -hmm. then you're going to get to that destination eventually right right okay um <clears throat> so let's talk about well hold on one second go ahead i'm sorry so i'm gonna ask you this talk to me okay what does success look like mm -hmm. for you in so marriage I mean, for me, of course, like I just mentioned, you know, you know, you have success that's going on presently, 
-hmm. Success to look forward to, right? That's the future. And then, of course, you know, I can look in that rearview mirror and look at what successes we've ever already had, right? Okay. And it's different levels of success in, with different aspects of our marriage, you know? Okay. So uh, overall, I feel like if the, if the question is, is our marriage a success or a failure, or a failure mm -hmm. my goal is to continue to have it successful. It's already successful, but it's gonna continue to be successful. Right. Because I've made up my mind to have a successful marriage. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, my answer was a little bit different. Okay. Um, I do agree with everything that you said, but I think that and success. That's off the dome. <laughs> success in a marriage to me looks like um, dependability, like mm -hmm. being able to depend on your spouse um, no matter what. Um, we talked about it earlier as far as like dealing with conflict. Mm -hmm. in the marriage like how well are we able to deal with conflict because obstacles will come right and then um longevity like i just got finished visiting my great grandmother she is 95 she'll be 96 this year <laughs> um my grandfather is no longer living but whenever he died they were still married so mm -hmm. they were married for 74 and a half years yeah, and, it's not so common nowadays. Right. Yeah, yeah. But being able to stand the test of time, um, mm -hmm. that's successful marriage to me. Because yeah. she still talks about him in a good light. Um, so that's successful to me. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And being yeah. able to be role models to other marriages. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's part of it, too, you know. Uh, like, especially whenever we meet other couples, man. You know, um, like even that trip we just did in Punta Cana, man, we're looking forward to seeing you guys again in uh, February, in right? Yeah, we'll be in Jamaica, right? Mm -hmm. You know, but just seeing all the different models and examples of, you know, um, successful marriages, you know, um, you know, everybody was the example, right? And right. everybody's, you know, kind of, it's almost like an accountability type thing yeah. that we was, you know, uh, attending. You know, everybody is holding each other accountable for their marriages to a certain extent, you know? So, yeah. That was pretty dope about it, too, you know. Um, and it doesn't mean that the mm -hmm. marriage is perfect. Because um, right, right. I do seek to be um, a role model for other people in their marriage. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean that I think that our marriage is perfect. Right. So even being transparent. Perfection is another subjective thing, in my opinion, too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not such a... Everybody says there's no such thing as uh, perfection, but, right. you know, uh, again, it's, it's, it's subjective to me, mm -hmm. you know, whether you define as being perfect and you strive for perf perfection. Mm -hmm. So everybody always says that. Yeah. yeah no. uh, real quick, though, I wanted to talk about, you know, the mind, right? Okay. So um, I just want to talk about how powerful the mind can be and why I believe or we believe some people don't value it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is back to Earl Nightingale, right? But this is so powerful. Just check this out. So our mind is standard equipment at birth. It's free. And things that have been given to us for nothing, we place little value on. Mm -hmm. Things that we pay money for, we value. The reality is that the reverse is true because not only our minds, but our bodies as well are priceless and free. But the things that cost us money are cheap in comparison and can be replaced at any time. The things we got for nothing can never be replaced. So in other words, the mind is always taken for granted and we assign it little jobs instead of big, important ones. Mm -hmm. To me, that was just a very powerful statement because, you know, at birth, you think about it when you're born, when you're out the womb, right? What you're exposed to, you got to be very careful with, you know, what you're ex or what a child is exposed to, you know, day one. Right. Down from the music they hear what they see, like what their parents, you know, or just like how they interact with each other, um, you know, what your what type of television is on social media. I mean, it's just so it's a it's a wide range of things you have to be very cautious with, because especially at, at, at birth, the mind is just a sponge, just, you know, Soaking absorbing every every, yeah. every little thing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, like, you know, we take it for granted. You know, we don't think, we don't use our minds like we should. You know, we sign in little jobs instead of big, important jobs. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then the value we put on things is almost higher than the value of that mind. Because think about it, if you were to lose your mind, God, God forbid something happened to your mind, your mind, your your brain, that's the thing that's not replaceable. You yeah. know, it's yeah, you know, and it's free. But let you like, you know, I, I you know, at at the job, you know, I, I go on traffic accidents, man, you know, people have nice automobiles that are wrecked, flipping out, going crazy, upset. And I'm, th I'm thinking to myself, and I, sometimes I even let them know, like, that's usually one of my things. I say, hey, man, look, just be grateful that you made it out of this. You know, this car is replaceable. We have insurance. That's why it's one of the reasons why you have insurance. Right. We can replace this car. I've been on some accidents where, unfortunately, people have lost, lost their lives. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I guarantee you if the question for that individual or those individuals were, hey, would you have rather just lost a car? or your mind, I guarantee you they'd be more than happy just to lose the car. Right. So just just know that things like, you know, things we place high value on, they don't really matter at the end of the day. Like your mind and your body is the most valuable things you have, right? Because right. they're irreplaceable. They're, they're priceless, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you wanted to say something on that? Because uh, I have one more analogy for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly. Um, okay. I did think about um, like basically asking, would someone rather a million dollars or mm -hmm. a wealth of knowledge? Mm -hmm. uh, most people would go for that million dollars. You think? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's that's that's one of the questions. Like, if you have no education on what to do, like that's like you know, would you? Yeah, I mean, well, it's literally the same thing. I think I'd rather the wisdom because if you have the right wisdom. You can a million dollars is nothing in comparison to what you can really obtain. I mean, right. we're talking about monetary, mm -hmm. you know, something monetary of value. Uh, how much wealth can I obtain if I have the right mindset versus just handing me a million dollars and I have no education on what to do with with the with the money? Yeah. Nine times out of ten, if I have the wrong mindset, it's gonna go. It's gonna be squandered away. Right. So yeah. Uh, but real quick, the, I have a land analogy for you, right? <clears throat> okay. So think of the mind like land. Okay. If you have a plot of land and you plant corn in one spot on the land and hemlock on the other side of the land, hemlock, for those who don't know, I didn't know this either, but I, I'm just playing like I did know. But hemlock <laughs> is a poisonous plant, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, you plant these right in both two different spots. You got corn over here, hemlock over here. Mm -hmm. If you nurture both, take care of the land, they're both going to return in abundance. Mm -hmm. The land didn't care what you plant. But you have to be cautious what you plant in your mind because like the land, it will return in abundance what you nurture it, right? Mm -hmm. So that kind of goes back to what I mentioned earlier. Be cautious what you're feeding your mind, right? Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah. Like, what are you feeding your mind? Um, what are you consuming every day? Really ask yourselves that when you wake up first thing in the morning, like, what do you put on? Do you go to your phone? Do you go to social media? Do you search just uh, obscene, obscene things, you know, uh, negative things, people fighting, girls twerking, uh, whatever, you know, just things that aren't valued to your life, right? Uh, to your marriage, right? Uh, other women, are you looking at other women, men? Are y'all looking at other women, women? Are you looking at other men? What's, are you looking at other men? Okay. They there, but huh? <laughs> you know, I'm not focused Clowning, on clowning, right. <laughs> I mean, again, you could be attracted to other things, but at the end of the day, you know what you're coming home to and you value that, right? But again, look, you have to be cautious what you feed your mind. What you watch on TV, are you watching, you know, um, content that can actually help you uh, have a better life? Right. Uh, you know, uh, or are you watching The Housewives, you know? Yeah, whatever, you know. If you watch <laughs> enough Housewives, you're going right. to start acting like them, I, talking I believe like it. them. I've seen that. I've seen that. And have yeah. a lot of drama in your life. It's, it's, yeah, it's crazy. That's what I'm saying. You know, it's going to return in abundance, whatever you plant it. So be very cautious with, with how you feed your mind on a daily, right? Um, and that's pretty much where we are, like, uh, at the end of this video. We want y'all to do that exercise. So, you know, I already, asked, I already said it, but I'll say it again. Ask yourself, what are you planning, right? Um, success or failure for your marriage? You know, if that's a... You know, that's the topic of discussion today, of course. So what are you planning for your marriage, success or failure, right? Uh, and how often yeah. do you speak on it? 
because mm-hmm. just like in a business, you have to go over mm-hmm. um, the vision um, or the mission statement of the business often mm-hmm. with the employees. So just like in your marriage, you should have a purpose in your marriage. How often do you um, discuss that purpose? How often mm-hmm. do you tweak it or um, just put focus and effort into the purpose of your marriage and the vision mm-hmm. for your marriage so that you can follow that road, go yeah. down that journey. Exactly. Right. So, yeah, guys. So, like I said, this, this video was a little shorter and sweet. Uh, but, you know, we want to touch on each topic, you know, marriage, a little bit of marriage, a little bit of money, a little bit of mindset, you know, on what we know about it. And we're still learning as we go, by the way. We don't know it all, but we know a little something, something. We want to get y'all that, you know, so we do hope y'all enjoyed today's video. Um, and again, this isn't the entire speech uh, on um, uh, the strangest secret in the world. Um, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's very good. You like, can listen to it often. Y- y'all go listen to it, really. Like, yeah. I usually, we, don't, we try not to promote other people's stuff, but if it's good, man, hey, I'm going to promote it because it's very, I think it could be very beneficial for you. I'm going to say it one more time. It's Earl Nightingale, The Strangest Secret in the World. Check it out. Right. And uh, yeah, but y'all give us some comments like this channel or like this video. Uh, subscribe to the channel, YouTube. Go to Instagram and follow us. Right. And put some comments, man. I, y'all act like y'all scared to comment. Comment. <laughs> I, I want it. Good, bad. I don't care. Whatever. You know? Right. So uh, anything you want to say before we That's sign all off? I like, That's all comment, it. share. Yeah. Share and share, yeah, share and y'all. subscribe, yeah, definitely. So, so, for those who've been doing it, we greatly appreciate yeah. you. And we got more to come, man. So, we just bought some uh, we got some other props. I'm explaining later to y'all, so stay tuned. Uh, yeah. we got some, some nice things coming for you, subscribers. So, uh, again, appreciate it. Episode five, Marriage, Money, and Mindset. We'll see y'all next week. Until next time. <laughs>